Hey guys, um, welcome to today's video. This will be my take on the integration of the Fader Port 8 into Harrison Mix Bus 32C. Uh, this will be my first video, techie video, so I forgive me if it's a little bit rudimentary, but I'm very excited about how this all works together, so I just kind of wanted to share it with you. By now, there's quite a few videos on the Fader Port 8 out there and on Mix Bus, on, on the Harrison Mix Bus platform. So I'm not going to really go into too much detail about either, except as they work together with each other. Having said that, if you're new to Harrison um, platform, uh, I'm just going to give you a quick overview. Unlike other doors, Harrison aims to have quite a specific workflow and have a have a sound built into the the software itself. After you know playing with it for a bit, um, I can say that I, I quite like both. I like how the workflow works, and I like how what the sound of the, of the Harrison is. Each channel strip has its own EQ, sends to the mix buses and compression uh, compressor function, plus the normal like faders and, and pan and everything like that. And then the mix buses are on 32C, you have 12 on uh, mix bus, the, the younger brother of 32C, you have eight. And you, on your channel, you can send to any of the, of the uh, mix buses and you have it immediately available to you on the, on the channel strip itself. Then built into the mix buses is you have your drive function, which is basically tape, tape saturation. All right, that's a quick overview of mix bus. And the reason why I'm doing it is because of how the Fader Port 8 integrates into mix bus is very much dependent on the structure of mix bus itself. Okay. So, yeah, if any more, any, any other questions on Harrison, there's a lot of stuff out there on, on the web if you need to look into it. Uh, just a quick one as well. I I'm going to be reaching over to the fader port eight from the side. Normally, I'd have the fader port right in front of me. So while it looks a bit awkward to use, in fact, it's not. The other thing is this camera is not a great one, so you're not going to see what the scribble strips are, are doing up top. So every now and again, I'll just pop in a, a picture of what the scribble strips are showing. Your channels can do all the what you expect to do. You control your fader. If you've got a, ch a channel selected, you can control your uh, pan. You can mute. You can solo. Okay. And obviously, because you've got eight, you can select as you go along. And you can see the track's highlighted. So as you select here, it highlights the track over here. And it selects the track in Z2C. Over here, it tells you what, you, what the fader will be looking at or connected to. So if I wanted to do more than one, you can do that. If you need to, say you need to uh, control more than one pan, you can do that. You know, if you've got a stereo pan, you're trying to find tune panning, you can kind of do that. Sends relates to whatever, um, okay, let me explain quickly about the structure of mix bus. So you've got your 12 mix buses, of which I've only got five uh, using at the moment. But you can also create um, auxiliary buses, which I've got at the end of my session. So for instance, I've got, uh, put effects on your like early effects and reverb, chorus, that kind of thing. So when I'm over here, my kick, my, uh, my kick channel, and I wanna start working my sends. Firstly, you can control the sends uh, to the mix buses, all right? And as you can see, you can turn them on and off, which is pretty cool. If you look over here, boom, you're turning on and off here. If you need to bank through to, so you've got your first eight and you want to go through to your last four on the mix buses. But then you're, like for instance here, I've got my reverb. And if you can see here, I'm controlling my reverb. Send. Okay. If I'm in send mode and I'm just, just scrolling, I can do that. However, if I want to bank to like the last bank of send fades, I can do that too. So it's quite, it's really cool. If you use the shift changes how this operates on the on the selection. Plugins are, yo, 
it's going to be a whole video all on its own because what you can do with Fader Port 8 in controlling pretty much every single detail of a plugin is pretty amazing. So I want to spend a whole video on that and it's going to take a bit of time to cover everything. So suffice to say that you can control the built-in, you can control your EQ, you can control your compression, and you can control your VSTs on here. It's going to be a, a really nice video to do is, is when I look into the VSTs. All right, so that is the fader mode. These buttons will um, choose what the faders are looking at, quote unquote. So you can get the, the faders only to look at the audio channels, which I've got on now. Uh, virtual instruments, which I don't have any on, so you can see nothing is selected. Buses. By buses, it's referring to these mixed buses over here. So if you look over here, I can manipulate those. And pretty much do everything on the, on the buses that I can do in the audio channels. Uh, including look at including work on DSTs and sends and pans and that kind of thing. Plus on the buses, you uh, can also control when you go into plugin edit plugin mode, you can control your drive, your panorama, and that kind of thing. VCAs, I've got a VCA set up here, so I can, if you look on the right hand side here, um, can do that, and you can see the the VCAs that are linked to this are also moving. Okay, and you can solo, you can mute. You can't at this point uh, select spool. Uh, on any of these, so you can't select spill on here or on the buses. That'll be a nice thing for a future update. Okay, so that's VCA, then all lit access to everything, including the master fader. Um, all, and then you can you can select your inputs, which I don't have any on at the moment, so you won't see them. You can select MIDI channels, which I also don't have any uh, in the session. Outputs, which here yeah, you got your master fader, okay. but also I think if you've got uh, monitoring, you'll also uh, that channel will also come up here. Yeah? FX is pretty cool. FX relates to all your utility buses, your mix buses over here, and your utility buses, which I have set up like a uh, reverb chorus, that kind of thing. You can see it coming up. Change my chorus. Um, or utility bus because we assume that you're going to be putting effects on there, which in my case I have. So I've got reverb, reverb, uh, more reverb. And then uh, you have an op option to have a user select, to sign a user selection over here, which I haven't done. So I can't really say much about that. So this here will tell you what, what channels your fader port is pointing to. This tells you what function within in the channel you are looking at. So over here we have our transport and it's pretty cool. It's really cool in fact. So wow. Doesn't like playing when it's got the video screen cap recording going on. Um anyway, so you can play, you can fast forward. You can rewind. You can loop. And then you can go into chords. One thing I haven't mentioned on the channel strips is when you want to arm, um, arm a track, you can, let me go to audio track. Uh, let me go here. Okay, where am I? Kick, okay. If you've got a track selected and you push arm, it doesn't automatically arm the track. You have to push and then select what you want to arm. And you can see up here that these are armed. This track here is a is a utility bus, so it won't you can't record anything on them. And then you can deselect. Okay. So um, why am I saying it? Oh, yeah, because if you arm something, then you can obviously record. The stop button and the pause button seem to do pretty much the same thing to me, except this. So if you're playing, uh, you push play and play pause it and if you got auto return highlighted up here it goes back to where you, where you were uh, where you started playing the stop button does pretty much the same thing except if you push it again it takes you back to the beginning of the song over here 
the uh, transport works great. I mean, I, lo- I love these knobs. I think it's strong. You know, I don't feel like I'm going to pound them to death over many years of use. Okay, so that is uh, your transport. Now the mix management we have over here. Your master. Let's go back to master. If you look over here, my master. Okay. I can do the same here. And if I if I've if I've changed any from anything by playing at zero, then I can click the knob and it goes back to zero. Uh, people might complain that you know there's only eight faders and you should have a ninth one for master. And to be honest, I don't miss it really at all. Well, very very seldom. If I really need to, because I'm not, I hardly ever change the master level. But if I really need to, I can go here, and I can very quickly change it. And if I want to go back, you just you know hit the hit the knob. Click works. Okay, section I don't really, I've never actually used, so I can't say much about it. So I'm gonna just leave it for now. But yeah, there are some functions related to it. Marker, um, marker is is a great tool. What I would suggest at the beginning of a session is to set up, you know, for your verse, chorus, etc. But you can set markers on the fly. So if I want to say I'm over here and I know this is a chorus. Okay, you saw me hit hit the button where I wanted to place a marker when you're in marker mode. The other thing about marker is you can scroll using the um, this knob here. So the buttons take you to markers and the scroll button lets you scroll. Which brings me to the scroll button, which pretty much does the same thing. Okay. Uh, what does it do? Okay, so in scroll function, you this scrolls uh, the edit window. Let me just see if it scrolls anything here. No, it doesn't do anything in the mix window. And when you push here, it scrolls. You can see if I select this track. It scrolls to um, the fader port. And you can see it because the selection is moving. Okay. Uh, so that's called zoom. Awesome. You can zoom in and out. And if you, something like this happens, because I think it's zooming where my mouse is, you push that and it, it brings up the whole your whole session into view. So you can see from your start to your end. Um, the other cool thing is, if you can see my Tom track is selected here, if you use the buttons, you can um, expand or contract the actual channel. Okay. Let me see if it does anything. Zoom, I don't think there's anything in the mix window. And then channel is, um, let's you when you use this button, it scrolls without selecting a channel. If you push this button, if you use one of the buttons, you scroll with selection. Okay, and you can see the fader port updating as we go. And lastly, the bank is basically about banking through on fader port. So you'll see, I'm going to select uh, another channel here just so you can guys can see it. So you can see I've got two two channels here selected um so i can bank oh you see me banking right and the faders move as you bank one thing i haven't mentioned is the color um the feedback that that this fader port 8 gives you is great so you can see this channel here guitar left center is orange so the kind is orange there if i go that one it's green and you get this kind of sickly pale color whatever that is green blue as you can see my blue here matches the blue here the blue on the fader port matches there so i think that's very cool so banking um another cool thing about banking is if you scroll on the mouse down to somewhere down here like a different part of your session you and it's not selected here okay push that knob in your bank mode and it comes available to you on the fader port 8. 
when you are have selected something that's say out of screen or out of view you know when you push select in there it doesn't automatically take you to that view on on your fader port 8 unless you're in bank mode and you push that button but you can still even though you can't see it you can still edit your plugins you can still uh edit your effects and the sense so that's your mix management uh, let me talk about automation so if you select a track uh, let me just go to organ where i am so now i'm here in organ and you can you guys can see it there if i want to automate right so you saw the fader move now the thing is automation works on the track that you've selected so if i go here nothing you can see and i think it's a really cool like how much feedback you get from this unit so if i select any one of these other ones there's no automation whereas if i uh, have go back to that, that uh what's it organ right track you can automatically see that there's automation on there if i was you i'd go back to read so you don't make a silly mistake somewhere down the line so if i want to do that your automation works in relation to what you have selected up here now the only thing that unfortunately automation only works on your fader and your pan it would be very useful when harrison implements the automation on your plugin and your sends which doesn't do at the moment so if i go into send mode uh you can't select you can't automate you can see all right, so in the near future, hopefully that happens. It's not just having this accessible, but how quickly and easy you can use it. So whereas in the old day, you know, before I got this, I would like <laughs> um, be very lazy and not automate. Now it's like, damn it, man, it's so easy. Just automate uh, your volume and your your pans. And it makes a big difference to how you play, play with your mix. So yeah, very cool. The macro is assigned to toggle between your mix, All right? and your edit and unfortunately there's a bug and that doesn't always work as advertised but when it does work that's it, sometimes it does work but other times it doesn't bypass we looked at where you can bypass your uh let me find plugins okay some over here and you can bypass your plugins um, as I mentioned, I'm going to look at bypass in much more detail with um, your when I look at the edit plugins mode and solo clear and mute clear. So let me look at uh, the shift functions in this mix management section and your automation. You, you can make these buttons user assignable based on your shift. So I just want to show you guys. So in your preferences, you can um, assign pretty much anything to, to one of these. Now, this this assigning is seems to be linked to your session. So on one of my other sessions, I've assigned a lot of things. Toggle mixer list. Okay, cool. Um, so I go to mixer. I can switch to mixer list on and off. Okay, so I've signed to F1, you've got F1 to F8. F1 to toggle mixer list. There are some very useful ones. So one thing, for instance, I've, let me see if I can find. Yeah, let's go for that. Add track or FX bus. So I can go here and I can add a track. Okay. Now, the one thing is you can notice as I push this, it tells you what is assigned. So none of these have been assigned to anything, so that they don't become, um, they don't light up. Um, so that's, I think that's pretty cool. And if I were to assign something to F4, it would light up. So this is a very good feedback on what you have and what you haven't assigned. And this can help also if you, you know, jumping between sessions, because different sessions you can assign different things to. As you can see, I mean, you can really you can assign almost anything to these buttons and then you got these three user assignable buttons up here as well in fact and you go for switch okay there's another very useful function in your settings is a two-line track name 
So when two line track name is disabled, your track name is all on one line. When you have two track two line track name, you can see if you look at your vocal harmony. You can display time code and you can display meters and pan. So let me try that. I tend to have the meters turned off only because the one the one downside I find with Fable 8 is if you've got a big mix and lots going on, every now and again it freezes and you have to restart your session in, in Harrison. So I've, I haven't really actually used it much, but in, it can be pretty useful because it's good feedback as to where you're working on in your mix. I'd like to show you another cool feature of Faderport 8 integration into Mixbus, and that is the link function. So if you see here, there's a link button. Now if you look at the screen, as you scroll over something that is editable, the link button color, uh, the link button changes color. You see it goes from orange to green. I'm not sure if it's coming through in the camera, but there you can see now it's activated. Now, whatever I, whenever that's linked, I can um, modify that parameter with the parameter knob. So go there. So I can do it with sends. Now you notice that the track doesn't have to be selected. I can literally put my mouse over anything. And as long as it, the link button is light, lights up, now you can work with your uh, EQs, pretty much everything. Now you can't manipulate plugins from the GUI. You can see it doesn't light up if I put my mouse over one of the parameters. So the way you have to do it is you have to open it in edit with generic mode it's yeah, in a generic mode and now you can uh can do it so let me change my attack you can do that uh, feed forward if you notice like this feed forward is an on off switch so it doesn't seem to switch between on and off it's only where you have variable variable settings uh release okay ratio so that is extremely cool. And it's very helpful if you've got a big mix and now you, you know, you're mixing on this channel over here, the kick, but you're sending, for instance, you're sending something over to your, your drum bus and you want to, just while you're there, you want to uh, change your send to your reverb as you're working on your kick. So you can just mouse over and do that kind of thing. All right, so guys, that's a basic in overview of the PreSonus Fader Port 8 as it works with Harrison 32C version 4.1. This has really changed my game when it comes to mixing. While I'm here, I'd also like to just send a shout out to X42 on the forums who developed a lot of these functions into the Harrison platform. He did a, like, a very cool job and um, taking a lot of ideas and making them work. So thanks to X42 and at the same time, uh, shout out to Ben from Harrison who has supported this kind of initiative and I think it will pay off because the more you can integrate your controllers into in native mode into the Harrison platform the more people have fun with the software and the more people will be able to get out of the software so cool so anyway thanks guys um, hope you enjoyed this and I hope you got something out of it and let me know if you have any questions and yeah if you one of those who has a different controller I'd love to see your videos as well okay cheers guys